certainly an interesting week in politics, now wasn't it? Yes, it's America's Evil Genius back with you once again, and uh, I guess we'll have to call this episode This Week in Sexual Harassment. I mean to tell you, the political hit job has been out on Herman Cain this week, hasn't it? And really, I think a lot of us who, who supported Herman Cain, and you guys know if you watch the show at all, I've been a Herman Cain supporter from day one, or even before. I was touting him probably before he even entered the race. A lot of us have understood from day one that something like this was going to happen. We understand that Herman Cain is enough of a threat to the Democratic, uh, Democratic establishment and the Republican establishment that it would be who would be either one of them to come up with some dirt on him. So someone finally uh, did come up with some dirt. We don't know if any of it's true. Uh, the media is acting as though it automatically is, but in truth, we don't know much. Uh, earlier in the week, about a week ago, we had a couple of ladies come out saying, well, he sexually harassed us, but they wouldn't give any details. And what slipped out was mainly, oh, well, there was a something physical or a gesture here, and it may not have been construed as sexual, but I felt uncomfortable, and really it was much ado about nothing. But the most concrete uh, allegation, or the most specific allegation anyway that we had, came yesterday. I'm taping this on Tuesday night, so when I say yesterday, I'm talking about Monday, uh, Monday about midday. Uh, Gloria Allred comes out. Now, if you're not familiar with Gloria Allred, Gloria Allred is a lawyer who is to sexual harassment cases what Jesse Jackson or Al Sharpton are to race baiting cases. Uh, whenever someone is sexually harassed or thinks they're sexually harassed or wants to be sexually harassed, here comes Gloria Allred out of the woodwork uh, to represent. She, she's a camera chaser from way back. In fact, I heard somebody say one time that if Gloria Allred ever went to prison, she'd never be able to escape because every time she'd try, she'd start running towards a spotlight. So Gloria Allred, maybe she's not an ambulance chaser, but she's a camera chaser. She comes out of the woodwork with some lady who made some rather pointed allegations about Herman Cain, and there were some more specific allegations than really anything we'd heard up to that point. Herman Cain since that time has categorically denied everything, uh, which really hasn't shut the media up at all. Uh, they're still treating this lady's word as though it's gospel. I think her name is Sharon Beliak, something like that. And uh, there's a whole litany of, of things that some are saying about her and, and trying to discredit her. You, you all will probably see that come out uh, through this week, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But basically, everybody's trying to position this as now that there's a face and a name with these allegations and there's something specific, that this is it. This is the end of the cane train. It's all over. It was nice. It was fun. But let's get on to the serious candidates. But is that true? Should I, as a Kane supporter, abandon him now? Do I have reason to abandon him now? If I, did aban if I did abandon him, then where should I put my support? Well, I'm not sure that I should abandon Herman Cain just yet, and I'll tell you why. First of all, as we've said, all of these allegations up to now have been pretty much he said, she said. Here's an allegation, here's Herman Cain denying it. Nobody to this point has really had proof of anything. Now, I know some of you are jumping up and down and saying, well, you should always believe a woman in a case like this. Well, not if you're not a feminist, you shouldn't. Uh, frankly, if you're going to uh, cast some aspersions at someone, then, then you should have some proof. Otherwise, shut up. I mean, if you're, if you're going to make some allegations, have something to back it up. To this point, no one has come out with anything concrete to back anything up. Now, this Beliak, her... Uh, her speech yesterday, her, her allegations yesterday were certainly the most damning of anybody who's been out there yet. And I trust that most of you have probably heard the specifics of it, uh, about you know going out, her coming out to Washington, D.C. to ask about a job or something, and they went out to dinner at a bar, and she asked him to take her to her hotel, and they stop off in the car somewhere, and uh, that's when everything happened. But when you really think about it, when you really stop and think about it, as damning as those allegations were that Ms. Beliak made, were they really that bad? Stop and think about that. Were the allegations that this lady made on Herman Cain really that horrific? Now, I'm not saying that I believe what she said, but playing the devil's advocate here, let's say that there is some truth to this. Would that truth be enough to make me, as a Cain supporter, turn my back on? Right now, I say no, and here's why. When you strip away all the accoutrements from yesterday's press conference, when you strip away the, 
the uh, the cameras and the lights and the reporters and Gloria all red sitting there smirking and making bad joke, jokes about stimulus packages and so forth. What were the allegations that Ms. Beliak made? Well, essentially, it boiled down to a little more than this. She alleged that essentially Herman Cain made an advance at her and she turned him down. That was it. That was all there was to it. He made an advance at her. She turned him down. And that is considered harassment. Not in my book. Um, as a healthy single male myself, I wouldn't call that harassment at all. I would call that Saturday night. That happens to pretty much every guy on this planet much more often than most of us would like to admit. But it does happen. Now, some of you are saying, well, what about the thing where he tried to take his hand and uh, grab her leg and go up her skirt? Now, I won't go into all the gory details of it, but what about that? Wasn't that over the line? Wasn't that a, a, a sexual assault? Well, I will admit that when I first heard that particular detail, again, with nothing being proven, nothing uh, substantive coming out making me say that this would, would be uh, truthful, but playing devil's advocate, when I heard that particular allegation, I'll admit that... For a second, I was like, all right, that's, that's a little much. That's, yeah, that's a little far. But then I thought back. Again, being a male uh, in society who, who exists and co coexists with females uh, just like every, everybody else does. When I think back, I have been in situations, and a lot of you gentlemen probably have too. I've been in situations where, you know, you're out with a, with a girl, it's going real well, it's, and I'm going to try and describe this as best I can in a family format here, this, this is a political commentary show, this is not penthouse forum, but, you know, you're out with a girl, things are going well, it's pretty obvious to both of you how the evening's going to end, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, uh, there's some chemistry there, if you know what I'm saying, I've been in some situations like that where, let's just say, such a approach, like Mr. Kane is alleged to have made, I've been in some situations where an approach like that would not only have been appropriate, but would have been welcome. Now, I'm not saying that in this incident, if it even happened, that such an approach was appropriate, but, you know, hey, we've all been in situations where there's some some mixed signals, where you think you're getting one signal from a girl and you're really not, and hey, there's a misunderstanding, and hey, you clear it up and you go on your way. Worst case scenario, that's what happened here. Worst case scenario, Kane allegedly makes an advance, she says, what about my boyfriend, and that's it. In her own story, she doesn't even say that once she said, what about my boyfriend, that Kane persisted or, or tried to convince her or cajole her, she doesn't say that. Further, she doesn't say after that point that he tried to do anything more physical or grab the head again or anything like that. Never happened. What I'm hearing, if it were true, which I don't believe it is, is pretty much what happens on just about every college campus any night of the week. That's it? That's the big scandal? That, that's the best you people could come up with? Seriously? I mean, whether it was Perry's people that did it, or Obama's people that did it, or some people going rogue at the Politico that did it, or some, some journalists or whatever, that's it? That's all? That's all you can come up with? This guy that you're trying to take out of the race, and the only thing you could come up with was that he hit a girl and she turned him down. Oh my God, no man can ever run for political office again. Holy crap, my political career is over. Woo! Oh my goodness, give me a break. But if you're not convinced, let's think this through a little bit more. Let's, let's say that Herman Cain has this baggage of being known to be a bit flirtatious with a lovely lady. Let's say that's the baggage that he's stuck with. And all these journalists are saying, well, this ends his chances of the presidency. No way he can win the nomination now. He should just get out of the race. It's all but over for him. Let's say that that's the baggage that's, gonna, that's going to dog Mr. Cain uh, from here on out. If I compare that baggage that he brings to the table with the baggage that other major presidential candidates have, how does that compare? Well, let's take a look one by one. Let's look at Barack Obama. We 
obviously know he's the president, and he's going to be running for election, so he's in the race. So how does Mr. Kane's baggage compare to Mr. Obama's baggage? What baggage are you talking about? Well, well, there is always the Bill Ayer stuff that was never vetted during the last election, and you know, I know some people don't want to hear about that, but it's still out there. But even if you don't want to talk about that, let's, let's look at his record. Uh, Obama tried and, and succeeded to some extent in getting a government takeover of health care. Hey, those death panels to put our senior citizens in front of, Obama achieved that. Uh, he's, every other move he's made has been to try and take wealth from those who have earned it and, and give it to those who have not. Wealth redistribution, trying to tax the wealthy out of their britches, etc. He's trying, by his own admission, to radically change and, and, and formally change American society. He said that during his election. He's continued on through his presidency. There's his baggage. So if I compare that baggage to, to Herman Cain's, who, who's more offensive? Who's worse? Obama's baggage, as that he hangs around revolutionaries like Bill Ayers and socialists like Bill Ayers, and he's taking over the healthcare industry, and he's trying to redistribute all the wealth, and he's trying to tear down the pillars of American society, and Herman Cain's baggage is he occasionally flirts with a pretty girl. I think I'll take the guy who occasionally flirts with a pretty girl. Okay, what about Mitt Romney and his baggage? Mitt Romney, hey, he too tried a government takeover of health care. A little less, wasn't quite as expansive as what Obamacare was, but it was still a government takeover of health care. And then he's flip-flopped in every other issue known to man, and no one really knows what he really believes about anything. He doesn't seem to have any principles. There's Romney's baggage, doesn't have any principles, tried his own government takeover of health care, and is flip-flopped on everything. And Herman Cain's baggage is he occasionally flirts with a pretty girl. Which one's more offensive? I think the occasionally flirting with a pretty girl is a little less offensive. What about Rick Perry? Rick Perry's baggage. Rick Perry's baggage is, well, he was in favor of in-state tuition for illegal aliens. And he can't manage to stay awake during a debate, but that doesn't bother me so much. But it's, it's mainly that state tuition for illegal immigrants thing. That's Rick Perry's baggage. In-state tuition for illegal immigrants. Herman Cain's baggage? Occasionally flirts with a pretty lady. I think the flirting with a pretty lady is a little less offensive than in-state tuition for criminals. Just saying. So there's your main contenders for the presidency. Oh, I'll put one more in there. The last one I'm going to put in there, this guy isn't really a contender, but if I don't mention him, all of, all of his uh, internet followers will get mad at me and bombard my mailbox. So Ron Paul. We'll pretend for a moment that Ron Paul is a serious candidate for the presidency. Even though he's not, what baggage does, does Ron Paul bring to the table? Ron Paul's baggage is a foreign policy, or lack thereof, that will get us freaking killed. Herman Cain's baggage, he occasionally flirts with a pretty lady. Which one's more offensive? Foreign policy that gets us killed, flirting with a pretty girl. I'll take the guy who occasionally flirts with the pretty girl. The bottom line of all of this is, what Cain has truly done, when you compare it to what everybody else brings to the table, really isn't that bad if it's even true at all, which I doubt. Don't let the media, the Democrats, the Republican establishment, any of those people, don't let them distract you from what's actually important in this election. Is the most important thing in this election the possibility that Herman Cain might have gotten a little too flirtatious or a little too handsy with a girl somewhere along the line? Or is the most important thing in this election the fact that we have a sitting president who's trying to destroy this country as we know it, trying to destroy its foundation, destroy the principles that we're built on, and that we have some candidates in the Republican Party who aren't much better? That's the important thing about this election. I continue to stand behind Herman Cain. Because at this point, first of all, I don't believe the allegations yet. I've not seen any proof. But even if it comes out, I don't see another candidate out there anywhere who brings to the table what he brings. I don't see a candidate out there who I'm more comfortable with the job they will do. Frankly, given this field right now, I'm behind Cain. And at this point, I don't really care what any of these women say he did to them. If you want to get me to turn my back on Cain, you're going to have to come up with something a lot better than this crap. 
This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next week.